Welcome back, this is Data Engineering Zoom Camp week one and in this series of videos we are talking about Docker and SQL. So far what we did, we talked about Docker, then we talked about running Postgres with Docker, we took a look at the data with uh, taxi rights and then we populated our Postgres database with this data and then in the previous video we took a look at connecting Postgres with pgAdmin using docker networks so we created a network and we put two containers inside one network in the previous video i promised that next i would talk about docker compose but i forgot about one thing that i also wanted to cover you probably remember the script that we wrote here so this is how we actually populated the database what i wanted to do i wanted to turn this notebook into a script and i wanted to put this code in this pipeline.py file and this way we will have our data pipeline that will download the data and it will put this data, whatever data it downloads, to Postgres uh, SQL. In the next week we see how to do this with Airflow, but um, now we'll just uh, do it uh, in a quick and dirty way and in the next week you'll see how to do it properly. So let's do that. We will start with uh, this uh, notebook and what we'll do first is we will convert this notebook to a Python script. For that we will use Jupyter. In Jupyter there is a subcommand and the convert and then we can specify two parameter which will be to what format we want to convert it. So the format we can want to convert it to is script and then we need to give it a name, upload data and now it will convert the notebook to a script. Let's open it. This upload data. This is the same content as we had in the notebook, but now it is in a form of Python script. I will just clean it a little bit. I'll remove all things we don't need. I'll move import at the beginning. So create an engine. I'll also put here. We will not print it. I think we also don't need that. Here we need this preprocessing. Here this row will um, create a table here this is like a line magic I remember this time command so let me remove that and i'll move import at the top and i'll leave this code that is not the best one i think i'll just call it ingest data ingest means uh, take something and put this to a database and we will talk actually about ingestion in the next week so here is like poor man's ingestion that uh, i will just use pandas for putting data to our local postgres and we need to configure that in this pipeline we use this arc v for configuring it i want to use a library called arc parse arc parse for python this is actually a part of standard library and it allows us to parse command line arguments. Let me import that. So then we can have named arguments like user, password, host, port, database name, location of the file, things like that. So we'll use this code snippet and copy it here. Description, this is what it will print in, uh, in help. So description can be in just uh, csv data to postgres then we have a bunch of arguments let me first uh, write them here so we need uh, user password host port database name table name url of the csv and finally yeah that uh, i think that should be sufficient let's add all these parameters we'll start with uh, user we don't need all that username for post this then password host port yeah actually this port should be an integer but i'll just keep it simpler and keep it as a string then database name table and this is uh, the name of the table where we will write the results to and then finally url of the csv Okay, and now we parse the arguments and actually let me 
put this uh, all that in uh, so I'll create a main function so all this code will live in the main function and then I'll have some params here and now we can unpack these params so we have user params user then password params password I think we need to use password here because pass is a reserved keyword in Python so we need to write password then host port then database oh it was just db then table name so let me also put underscore here params table name I think these are this is what we need so now we will replace this so this will be user password host port database and then actually at this point uh, right here we also will need to download the csv and then we download the csv then we read this csv let me call it csv name will be some output csv for example and this is what we will read and this will be table name this one is also table name and now we can just run this so yeah if we want to do this properly then in python there is uh, this thing called main method if we can main block python yeah this one so it explains why we need this i will not go into details i will just mention that um, yeah we need to use that for things that we want to run as scripts and then execute this main function this parser will parse all the arguments and will pass them to this main method and then the main method the main method will do the thing so we just need to figure out how to download the csv file and for that i think i can just go with uh, a very simple way of doing this i'll kind of just use os to import this and then i'll use os execute it's os system and here i can pass any command i want this command could be I'll again use a f string this command can be wget then this will be url and then we can also specify the output which will be this csv name this uh, will use wget to download from this url and it will write the result to a file with this name yeah we can test it to test it what we can do is we can drop the table we have and then we see that this table is actually recreated so for that we can just go to our pgadmin and do drop table so this should remove our table now if we try to execute this query again it will say sorry this table doesn't exist anymore because we just dropped it now let's execute this there's quite a few parameters here first let me write the command here it will be ingest data.py and then we will need to specify all these parameters So now we need to specify user password so user for us is root password is root so this maybe is not the safest way of passing passwords because uh, they will be kept in the history in bash we in terminals we have history so we can access this history right and if we pass passwords in if we just type them in terminal they will be saved in history so this is not the safest way of passing passwords it's better to pass them through environmental variables for example or through some um, even more secure ways like password uh, stores and so on for now we'll just go with the simplest way and then uh, for host now let's do it in localhost but then later we will convert the script we will put this in docker and then we will need to change that then the port is 5432 database ny taxi table name yellow taxi trips and then url this is this csv file let me make it a variable okay let's see if it actually works 
think the reason is that we need to include uh, minus minus here. So let me try one more time. So typo forward. And I forgot that for me then loading is slow. Let me wait a couple of minutes. While I was waiting for this to download, I missed the part when it actually downloaded the file and it started inserting this to database. So it already inserted 1, 2, 3, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so almost all, um, almost everything we needed. Yeah, it finished. I think we, if we put this to Docker, it will exit not with error code 0. I can actually see this error code, I think, using that should be echo but we saw that it's one and one means that the program hasn't finished successfully and zero means that it finished successfully so any non-zero code means that the program wasn't successful for us it is kind of successful so ideally we won't process this exception and then exit successfully let's not do it right now it's just something to keep in mind i don't want to spend time on improving this code yeah we can see that it finished it what we can do now open Admin. I want to refresh it and see what are the tables there. So we see this yellow taxi trip. Okay, I changed the name. So it was data now trips. Yeah, we have all the records as previously. So this way we can put this code that we have in the notebook, we can put in a script and then we can execute it. Now let's uh, dockerize this. Let's put this to Docker. For that, uh, in addition to pandas, we need to install SQL Alchemy. And um, also, actually, we didn't talk about this, and uh, Anaconda comes with a package called uh, Psycho PG2, which is uh, a package for Python for accessing Postgres. Uh, we can look it up. So, this um, database adapter for Python means that this is a library for accessing Postgres through Python. It comes pre-installed with Anaconda as far as I remember, so that's why I didn't need to install it. But if we want to dockerize it, we need to make sure that it's actually there. All the dependencies are there. We also need to install apt-get because this is something we use here. So we use apt-get here. Let me install it. Let's run. Oh, we need to do something like apt-get install wget. Not sure it, if it will work. Well, well, let's just try and test it. And then I'll rename this pipeline to ingest data. I think that's all we need to change. Um, now let me build it. So it will be docker build minus t taxi ingest. Version can be, let me call it 001. I don't think I need to specify anything else, so let me just run it. I'm not sure, was it successful or not? Perhaps it was. So now let's wait if it installs uh, all the dependencies. Okay, it finished. Let's see what happens if we just run it. We use the same parameters we passed, but now instead of doing Python and just data, I will do docker run this name, and then I will put all these parameters. Okay, um, I remember that uh, my internet speed is not that good so i'll probably have to wait another 10 minutes now for this thing to execute only to see that it actually fails because now when i run it in docker i will try to connect to localhost yeah we know what happens when we do this because localhost for a container is the container itself there is no postgres running there on this container so we actually need to run this thing in the network so i will stop it uh, <laughs> i forgot to do minus it and this is what happens when you forget to do minus it. I press Ctrl C, but because uh, it's not interactive, I cannot do this. Stop it actually, I will need to do docker ps. So now I see a list of running containers, and then I need to do docker kill, and then id of the container, it was killed. So this is what happens when you forget to do minus it. You cannot stop it from your terminal. And yeah, I want to run it in the network so let me run it in the network uh, this is a parameter that should be specified before the name of the image and let me make it clear that these things are parameters to docker and these things are parameters to our job okay let me execute that yeah, of 
put it uh, slash here. Yes. So now I'll come back in 10 minutes. It will probably take a while to download it again. I don't know why it's so slow. Actually, you know what? Instead of having to wait, I can show you something else. Because we already have here this yellow trip data, right? So in Python, there is this thing called HTTP server. This is how we run it. So we do Python minus M HTTP server. And then we start a simple HTTP server on this port. So if I do localhost 8000, then I get all the files that are in this directory. So we have all the files here and yeah, we have actually this file that I can download pretty fast, so I don't need to wait for 10 minutes. The only thing I need to know here, if I use localhost, then um, for the container localhost is itself, it will not know how to unload this. So I need to know the IP address of my computer. So that I do if config, uh, yes, on Windows it's IP config, on Linux it's AIF config for me. This is probably this address. Let me check it. Yeah, if I put this in uh, the address, it still works. I copy the link and now I will replace this URL with a new one. Hopefully it will be faster. Now let's test it. Now let's time is much faster. So I don't need to wait for 10 minutes. That's good. Um, okay, let's see what happened. Yeah, the reason for that, as I as we discussed, I put it to the network, but I forgot to change localhost. So I need to use this uh, PG database as the host. Let me run it one more time. Something is happening. But, uh, let me take a look at PG admin. If I run it now, yeah. So this time, because we had this table, because we have thing here replace it drops a table and creates a new one if a table with such a name exists so that's why it started again you see yeah it's already 300,000 we can see that it works from docker as well we don't need to wait till it puts all the data there i think you can trust me that uh, it works this is how we dockerize data pipelines of course we don't do this uh, network thing this is just for local testing in real uh, life scenario, you would have, instead of uh, using this PG database, a local database, you would have a URL to some database that runs in your cloud. And we will see how to do this actually with BigQuery. So you have some database that runs in your cloud and you have uh, you use a URL to this database. And yeah, you can see instead of typing this with Docker, you use something for executing this. For example, it could be a Kubernetes job. We will not do it here. This is outside of the scope for this course, but it's just for you to know. So we will not use Kubernetes, but we will use Airflow and you will see how we will do similar things with Airflow. Yeah, it's still inserting. We will not wait till it finishes. Oh yeah, it just finished. What we will do next is the thing I promised you in the previous lecture is we will cover Docker Compose as a way to put together multiple services in one configuration file. So see you soon.